Hey everyone, Ryan here, or MNR Productions, and welcome to my review of the 2010 LEGO Star Wars Republic Swamp Speeder, set number 8091, recommended for ages 7 to 12, with 176 pieces. This set technically has five minifigures, with two battle droids, a super battle droid, uh, you know, I don't really think droids are quite minifigures, but you know, they're there, and then you get a new clone trooper and a new Barriss Afi, who gets much more attention than the new clone trooper, and this is the only set that clone trooper came in, more on that little bit later. The set was also a Toys R Us exclusive and it retailed for 30 bucks. It was overpriced. If you look at that in today's money, that's about $36. Here in a moment, I'll show you guys what comes in the box. There's a lot of box bloat, so kind of unfortunate in that way, but the box art is pretty attractive. It's showing Seleucami and the Swamp Speeder just zooming through there, taking out some battle droids basically with those flick fire missiles, so that's kind of neat. There are some fun play functions and whatnot in this set. Also, shout out to the shadow of the homing spider droids there on on Saluke, my kind of neat back of the box shows you some other sets from the time, including the Freako Speeder, Droid Tri Fighter, and uh, Tide Defender. There, another angle of the Swamp Speeder, and then a few different play functions for the Swamp Speeder as well, including the ability to move it forward. Did you know you could literally move this set forward? That's a pretty big play feature. I feel like since I explained that this box is too big, I should totally unbox it. Like I say a lot, I don't typically unbox sets in my reviews, but for this set specifically, it is so light in the box. I mean, the box is way bigger than it has any business being for this particular set. So yeah, I think we're gonna open this up. I mean, it's never not cool to unbox a 10 year old set, but this one may be one of the least cool to unbox. It's not worth a lot. Plus it's basically empty. I mean, a lot of fluff space in this box. So you get one bag, which maybe has like a hundred pieces in it, if that, and then you're gonna get bag two and a little bag and then instructions. So let me put that up in front of the box to give you a real good idea here of what you're getting for your, oh, the sticker sheet is like kinda yellowed, kinda sorta not really type of thing with that. That's a little weird, hmm. But yeah, I mean, look at these pieces versus the box. I mean, this is what you get inside the box. That is how much it fills up the box. It's literally nothing. It's insane how little pieces you get in this box for how big it is. It's one of the craziest ones for LEGO Star Wars I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of LEGO Star Wars sets, so I think that's noteworthy on this set. It just is really weird how few pieces you're getting. And I know price per pieces and everything, but to me, this set is a perfect example of just something that doesn't provide the value even when you take away that piece count. I mean, it just doesn't have a lot going on there for how big of a box they tried to throw this in. I mean, for, for reference, in modern day, they sell sets worth up to like 80 bucks in a box this size. So it's pretty insane how things like that have changed. Our first figure up is a simple battle droid. And back in 2010, these were maybe somewhat new with the straight arm only having been introduced in 2007. But yeah, you get two of them in the set. They have the regular Lego Star Wars blaster there and they look generally good. I think the battle droid has really been a good figure for Lego over the years. And these don't really disappoint. Continuing to add on to your droid army is a super battle droid, another character that looks quite amazing for having been around for so long. You have this kind of open back, which honestly looks a bit weird, but as far as the front of the super battle droid goes, it's a pretty superior look, very strong looking, and of course the arms are poseable, so you can put one arm up and have him pretend to be shooting at the Jedi or the Swamp Speeder. I think it's a pretty good look. The weight of that is a little bit awkward, though. You can have these figures fall over if you don't have them attached to studs. That's one of my like main little issues with them, but other Otherwise, uh, these figures are pretty dang good. While it may not be entirely obvious at first, this was an exclusive clone trooper to this 2010 Swamp Speeder, and I do believe this was the final open eye look for the clone trooper. This was the last one that they made, and after this, they switched over to the fully closed out mold with just the print on it for the see-through visor or whatever. Like, they made some big changes to the clone trooper after this one, but this was kind of the end of an era as far as these clones go, and it was kind of the peak for them. It had the dotted mouth pattern, which is kind of what made this one uh, unique as far as the helmet goes compared to the 2005 7 uh, versions of this particular figure. And then the lines for the torso, while the print didn't actually end up being uh, super different the, the biggest difference in it is that it was actually like a thicker line 
in there. Like all the lines were thicker and it's a little bit of a darker, more black look. So that's kind of the interesting change that they made with this character uh, going into 2010 here and really with the final iteration before that full on redesign that they end up doing in like 2014. So good looking figure, of course, just a black head underneath if you weren't sure. Of course, that was standard for the time, but maybe not so much anymore in 2020. Love this figure. I wish there were two in the set for 30 bucks. I think they pretty much knocked the Bera Safi look out of the park. You've got the good old hood piece. You've got a black cape piece. But what I really like on this figure are those really nice and fine details in the torso. Obviously, no leg print or arm print. So there definitely is something to be desired there. But the torso print is actually really cool with some dark blue lines that are somewhat difficult to see uh, unless you're at the correct lighting angles. But that's what I really like about this figure, I think. It's just those small, fine details that are immediately maybe noticeable. And plus, her face detail is quite excellent as well. I think they really nailed that look down. You can see they used a, a unique kind of color for the uh, color of her skin there for both her face and her arms. So that's a little bit of a nice thing you have going on there. And then as far as the lightsaber goes, just a standard blue lightsaber. But yeah, Barisafi to round out the figure selection is not a bad choice. However, uh, again, I think these figures would have really benefited from another clone trooper or something, especially again for 30 bucks. The instructions sometime contain some nice surprises and I like to throw that in here. We have a nice little poster of some other January 2010 sets with the Arc 170 and Droid Tri-Fighter there as well as some summer 2009 sets with the Clone Wars Y-Wing actually a January 2009 set there with the Hyena Droid Baller and then of course the almighty Venator very nice little poster look there for a couple of those things. And then it also shows off some other summer 2010 sets in the back here. While I obviously have my qualms with the price of this model, I think it certainly looks good. I think this is easily the best Swamp Speeder they've ever created. We had one in 2005 included with a Wookiee Catamaran, and then we had another one in 2014 as part of a battle pack. And this one is far and away the best build. So it certainly has that going for it when compared to other Swamp Speeders. Now it does have some good play features and details. They do use some stickers to get in some of the finer details on these front uh, shields here. I think those are pretty nice pieces of armor or whatever for the Swamp Speeder as they're flying through the fire of the battle droids and the stickers are fine. They don't really line up very well. I found that to be a little bit annoying that you can't get the red to like line up with each other because the stickers just don't have enough reach in that aspect. So that was a little bit disappointing. But other than that, I think it's fine. I think the red markings as far as like an accent color work really well. You also have a couple stickers back here on the engine that you can line up much more nicely and end up looking much better than I think these ones, especially with the lack of uh, real perfect alignment there. So what this set does well is that it has this very nice mechanism to turn the wheels. So the wheels at the front actually turn, the wheels in the back are more just uh, to keep it on moving straight. But the wheels uh, up underneath, you can see a nice mechanism allows the wheels to turn. And it's a pretty simple build. Like you would think this would be complicated to build, but especially with that 176 pieces it's just not that hard you can turn it from the back like this however that's not really what you're gonna want to do with it you are gonna actually use the engine at the back which is a great use for because that's where you're gonna want to kind of push it along with anyway and so you can use the engine to turn you can see the wheels turn as I turn the engine it's kind of all one thing and then with the wheels turning it also turns the cannons or the flick fire missiles at the front of the swamp speeder so it really is kind of all integrated together it's one of the few sets that I think kind of brings things together like that like you have this engine at the back that moves the wheels that move and the weapons that move all with the same motion I think that's pretty dang cool it's something you unique about this set certainly I feel like so you can take a look one more time as those wheels turn as we move it along you get a pretty good turning radius with this thing I mean it's not perfect it's not great but it basically recreates being an airspeeder pretty well because those wheels you, as long as you kind of imaginatively ignore them basically make it look like it's hovering above the ground and when you're operating on a smooth surface it does roll pretty well with pretty low friction so I really appreciate this set for its playability in that way and speaking of playability, there are the flick fire missiles at the front here. And my issue with these is obviously they're flick fire missiles, so you're going to have issues with them anyway, um, getting them to even fly out. But once you have lost one or one flies out, um, it looks a little bit awkward and funky. And then on top of that, uh, you can actually pretty easily knock off the like front end of these. I've lost a few of these pieces over the years. I've actually owned a few of these uh, sets here for my clone army and whatnot, just as me as a collector. But you can knock those off and you're going to lose that type of stuff. And it's kind of unfortunate in that way where you're just going to have some issues with that if it's a, as a play set for kids. Obviously, if you're an adult collector like me at this point, you just 
just put it on a shelf. You don't have to worry about that. But that's just a little thing that I had always kind of had an issue with it for. Let me go get the other one so I don't lose my mind. Swamp Speeder does include two seats for your two minifigures here. There are some printed control panels on either side with pretty nice designs for 2009. Kind of maybe a little bit too much of a Christmas color scheme for me but still they fit in rather well and then for the center console you actually have a sticker that represents the control panel there and I like that one however my issue with that is that over the years you know like I said I've had a few of these that sticker tends to kind of come loose maybe it was just poor application of it on my end but that was definitely an issue that I had had over the last 10 years of owning a few of these and then you're also going to have some antenna pieces that you can use as like levers to control the swamp speeder and you'll of course be able to place your minifigures down onto the Swamp Speeder with the Clone Trooper on one side and Barra Safi with her cape on the other. And you can see it's actually a pretty good look when you have the figures in there. Like I said, I wish there were more uh, minifigures in general for this set for 30 bucks, but I think that these do complement it well when placed into the Swamp Speeder. So speaking of aging poorly, I think another place this set certainly ages poorly is that dark red color. And my biggest issue in this set that I've had with the versions I've had over the years and something I would say be very careful of is this red color clip piece. It is incredibly fragile. And this is a problem that I believe Lego says they have fixed in uh, recent sets. But for 2010, that was still an issue. And these will snap over time on these clip pieces, especially in this brittle red color. So that's something you certainly need to be careful with if you go out and buy yourself one of these, uh, especially used. Because of those brittle red clip pieces, I would certainly stay away from buying this set used. But hey, if you can find it brand new in box for like 45 bucks or under, I don't see why you wouldn't buy this one. It's a really nice classic 2010 set and you get the last iteration of the open helmet episode three clone trooper, which is pretty cool. A decent Barriss Afi minifigure, you know, battle droids are battle droids and so are super battle droids, although super battle droids are a bit harder to come by than regular battle droids. But I think the biggest draw is obviously gonna be the Swamp Speeder for a lot of people. It's just basically the best version that you can get of it. And it's surprisingly cheap for being a 2010 clone included set you just don't see sets with clones this cheap so it's one that i would recommend going out and getting i think it's pretty cool to be able to get a 2010 set for basically retail price and it's a defunct toys r us exclusive at this point so that's kind of neat